you have read a paper of Rahul and Babur published in 2020, correct? They have cited another article, which is probably from Churchill, 1979, right? Now this is the dilemma. Should we cite this first paper or we should cite the second paper or we should cite these both? What should be done? Let me tell you, the best way is cite Churchill 1979 first, stating you have read this paper under the paper of Rahul and Babur. Because Churchill, the paper of Churchill uh, from 1979 probably is not available on the platform. Yes, all of us are having good uh, connection, good network. Probably something is not available in my university. I'll go to your university and you'll help me in searching that. That's a good thing. But when Churchill has done this work in 1979 and when Rahul has done this work in 2020, this has passed somewhere about 30 years. Ex not exactly, but yes, somewhere about 30 years or maybe 31 years in fact. The idea has changed. The, not exactly changed, but idea has evolved. The idea has developed. Idea has been shaped by many researchers. So say if you are writing, mentioning a definition of this or something, if you are mentioning, sorry. So this is a, probably a definition and you are saying, Churchill has defined it in 1979, which is again cited in Corop 2020, right? This is the best way. Uh, if you say writing this first article is always better, I would say yes. If you are looking for first hand information, then yes, definitely. But the, you are not going to perform a systematic literature review. If you are performing a systematic literature review, then yes, Churchill should be cited first. And then after two, three pages, uh, Cora will take place because it is an SLR. And we are trying to explore whatever has been explored and whatever has not been explored. Most of the time, we are not doing SLR. And if you are not doing SLR, it is the best way to mention Churchill. This was cited in. Or maybe you can also start from, you have started a uh, core of 2020. This definition has been, or this definition has been reformed from, or I am taking or I am adopting this definition from the paper of core of 2020. And they have cited core of 2020 again, cited or maybe sometimes citing I've seen this also, citing Churchill 1979. Now everyone know you have come through the journey of 1979 to 2020. If you cite only 1979, people might be, I'm not, I'm not saying this is a 100% case, but might be, there might be a case people start started believing you have not been with the latest knowledge, with the modern knowledge, which whatever latest material is available, you have not looked at, correct? If you cite only Rahul or the score of 2020, probably people have started believing, probably people will start believing because you don't know who is a reviewer. You don't know who is reading that paper. You don't know sometime might be Rahul himself is reading that paper, the new paper which you have submitted. It is not the case with all the manuscripts, but yes, four, five percent manuscripts every, every year has been submitted. Most of the original authors are reading their the new manuscripts on the developed areas. So if you are citing only core of 2022, people might be, they started believing like you are not up to date from where the history from this exact paper has a started journey. Right. So, sir, and in case of the SLR paper, then we need to, uh, how do we start in that case? Sir? If it is a SLR paper, then definitely you'll have to start from 1979 and then 2020. Then core will take place about somewhere about two, three pages after two, three pages. Not, not on the same page, right? Right, sir. Thank you, sir. So when there is SLR paper, when we take a Scopus data, then a chart comes of a particular author that these many documents cited, but citations are this many. So mm -hmm. I don't 
फाइंड अ डिफरेंस बिटवीन लाइक आई डू नॉट अंडरस्टैंड द डिफरेंस बिटवीन कि अगर डॉक्यूमेंट सपोज थर्टी सेवन हंड्रेड है जिनमें वो साइटेशन हुई है और साइटेशन उससे ज्यादा है तो उसका क्या मतलब हुआ Let me tell you one more interesting story. I generally discuss this when I take the sessions on SLR. Uh, there is a very prominent author Bernard Lane. If you start searching it on Google, Google Scholar, your search is incomplete if you won't find a paper of Bernard Lane on rural tourism. But when you, we were very surprised. I, along with one of my scholar, along we were working together on a paper on. retrospective to perspective from on rural tourism and the challenge was bernard lane has got much popularity on uh, google scholar but there his paper we are not able to reflect we are not able to see his paper on either web of science or any other platform just when i simply type rural tourism using a new laptop probably i might commit more spelling mistake Sir, this is an excuse. <laughs> you can see this, Bernard Lane. Is it visible to everyone? Yes, sir. Bernard Lane. This paper has been published in nineteen ninety four, Taylor and Francis, and highest cited paper. Eleven hundred twenty nine citations have been received by this paper. Nowadays, this journal is doing well. Journal of Sustainable Tourism. Once I click on this, you'll be surprised. and this was pretty surprising for us also why we are not able to find bernard lane on any of the platform or any of the database you know what is the outcome of this um, hindrance the moment yes, when this paper was published in 1994 this journal was not scopus indexed okay. okay and that is why this is not included in scopus database so the number of citations were also not the part of scopus database so sometimes we need not to be mechanized researcher sometimes we need to humanize researcher also right this is what is my opinion so to matlab documents jitne marzi cite hue ho hame asli jo number of citations hai wo mention karni chahiye nahi because sir usme teen 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 para wo aate hai teen parameter aate hai ek एच इंडेक्स आता है फिर उसके बाद नंबर ऑफ डॉक्यूमेंट्स आते हैं फिर साइटेशंस आती हैं सो तो मुझे यही कंफ्यूजन हो गया है टू बी ऑनेस्ट ना आई हालांकि थोड़ी देर बाद मैं भी वही बात करूंगा आपसे बट टू बी ऑनेस्ट ना दिस नंबर ऑफ साइटेशंस एंड एच इंडेक्स एंड एम इंडेक्स एंड टी एस इंडेक्स देयर आर मल्टीपल टाइप्स ऑफ इंडेक्सेस एंड वी एकेडमिशियंस आर प्रमोटिंग वी यू शुड साइट द पेपर्स फ्रॉम ए कैटेगरी यू शुड साइट पेपर्स फ्रॉम this and that category correct i believe if a paper is good then the paper must get the citation the first paper of a smart pls written by christian ringel and marco and all all this team this was a b category paper and has got more than 10000 citation nobody is talking about that paper nobody is talking about the category or ranking of that paper everyone is talking about the quality of paper so in my opinion if you are doing an slr and if your criteria is h index or maybe number of citations or maybe scopus or web of science it respective to that uh, i'll tell you uh, once i'll discuss this uh, systematic literature review part i'll tell you one more way how to add your own papers your specified paper and how researchers are doing that so this paper is not part of scopus this paper is not part of web of science has got lesser citations even on the database but yes i find this paper is very important i being a researcher i being a person who is driving this car a better person I, i i can better understand this by the whole perspective which paper should be reported and which paper should not be reported this is what is my perspective this is what is my take on this one this so, is not mechanized this so is I, i'm just a just this is very mechanized like some something is been done something uh those who are working in uh, maybe uh, emerging countries and those who are those who are very much popular might be able to attract good number of citations those who are writing those who are able to write less number of papers they are good quality of papers but they are not able to attract more number of citations on that front ji sir citations h index m index everything should be considered only and when 
only in the situation when you are getting at least more than thousand of the research papers for reporting that. Yes. Right. If it okay. is not, just just a minute. Sir, can I ask one question? Uh, just allow me a minute. Allow me a minute. Just. Yes. Sorry. Yes. There was a question. Yes, sir. So two questions, one on observation that I was trying to do with some of the journals. So one mm -hmm. of the journal is through Elsevier Information and Organization, A star category journal. Mm -hmm. When I analyze this particular journal, first of all, I have not seen any of the Asians publishing any paper in this particular journal. Mm -hmm. It is a very good journal. Papers are really very good. And uh, the cycle is around 12 to 16. Most of the time, all the papers either they are from Europe and Europe very exclusively from UK. Uh, so can you repeat Ireland. the name of the journal? Name of Information the journal. and organization, elsewhere journal. Okay. Either from US and 7% it is from Australia. So while choosing such type of journals, whether, whether we should be conscious about uh, such statistics and then communicate the paper, that is first question. Second thing, because such type of journals takes around 16 to 18 months of time. And if I, our work is really good and we aspire for such type of things. So what should be our analogy while submitting such type of thing, or we should not do that at all. This is dependent on case to case, individual to individual, I believe. Say for example, my office needs, uh, like uh, there is a compulsion from my office to get publications very soon and everything. In that case, uh, I should not go with those type of journals. One second, everyone is running in this race, but probably all, all of us need to understand. All of us need to understand this um, this particular perspective, this particular situation. We are working in Indian scenario. We are not in Europe. Uh, there is very good friend of mine. Professor Dogan Gursoy, we have written a book, we have written, uh, completed two books uh, now and good number of papers on that. He was sharing one day, we used to take only two, three sessions, two, three lectures in a week. Whereas when we talk about Indian education system, I believe all of you will agree with me. You, at the time of your lecture load or at the time of your workload, they are, they'll show you the table, they'll show you that uh, UGC guideline. There is a minimum requirement of 18 lectures per week, right? However, I, I, I'll not go with that. Once they show you that UGC guideline, I don't, I don't understand that at the time of salary or at the time of remuneration, why don't they see that table from UGC or AICT or other regulatory body? So that's a different thing. I'm, I'm not commenting on that. But yes, this depends on case on case. Yes, if you have already published about 20, 25 papers or 30 number of papers, then yes, you should go with those type of journals. But for a starting, if you are a research scholar, if you are a, I'm not saying the A, a category journals are not good enough to submit. If you find it is, of, it is of good quality, do submit it there. But probably we need to be very careful the time aspect. Sometimes your supervisors are very, uh, like they are in need of publications. They are spending, they are spending time with you and thinking you will be able to publish this in next six months or, or maybe next one year. And another journal is able to, uh, the journal which has, where you have submitted is able to make a decision after about 16 months. This is really very scary situation. Irrespective, looking at, without looking at anything and simply submitting it to a category journal, journal is not a good idea. Once you submit to a category and if it is submitted once or twice, start submitting it to a B category. If you find five, six times it has been rejected from a B category journal also, start submitting to a C category. Do not wait for long. If you are waiting for long, probably you sometimes your data is getting old. Uh, you, you will be agreeing with me. 
I have submitted this rural tourism paper once, uh, which I have submitted. I sub we have submitted somewhere in January, not January. We have submitted in December 2020. This journal is a rural society, a B category journal, though it's a good category journal. They have accepted this paper. They have, they have considered this paper for review. And a week before when I wrote this letter to the editor, okay, we, we are not able to hear anything. And this is already seven months or eight months have been passed. And she has replied, you can withdraw your paper. We are not in the situation to review these, these um, uh, number of paper. I'm not very sure when your paper, paper will be reviewed. So I was very sad. Is it talk so rude? Rural Society. The name of the journal is Rural Society. No, no. I, I was asking, sir, do this really talk so rude that you may withdraw your paper? Yes, this yes. was the language of the editor. Oh my God. Worst happened with me after two years. <laughs> yeah, and this was the language of editor. Look at the pandemic situation. We have lost many of you, many of our friends. And I, um, though I was not able to ask because they are editors and we need to respect them. They are doing this for free. They are uh, no, they are not any uh, earning any money out of this activity, and that is why we are we need to respect them. Otherwise, I could have asked this question: Is the world stopped? If you have even if you have lost your uh, loved one, did you find the world stopped? Now it is about eight months. For how long you will be continuing this? We have lost many of our friends. We have lost many of the friends. Uh, I'm not sure. So, but yes, the editors are misbehaving in that front. If you find the editors are misbehaving, withdraw your paper very humbly saying, sir, goodbye or ma'am, goodbye. I'll submit her next time. <laughs> this depends case on case. So, sir, next question is related to the Max QDA, sir. I mm -hmm. tried to get some output, but the challenge is the, the interpretation of uh, those things in terms of code while writing the discussion and relating with the transcript quotes mm -hmm. it is becoming really little bit hard for me so if you can help us this, this is hard for everyone even the first time when i was doing this uh, this was hard for me there is no speci specific specific guideline this is what this is how you need to report your code this is how you need not to report your code this is not a statistics your p if your p value is less than 0 0.05 reject the hypothesis or if it is uh, more than this do not reject the hypothesis Significance is that, and this is not significant. You have to identify your ways. Look at the read good uh, quality of papers on that front. I'm sure you will be able to get your ways. Everyone has to find their own ways. There is no specific mechanized guideline, standardized guideline, how to report your course. There is no. And if it is, or if there is available, you are able to find something, I, I would suggest it is a wastage of time. Do not look at any of, any of uh, such kind. Thank you. Uh, so I, I may be rude at this time, but probably you'll find after a, if, if you submit, if you complete one or two paper of based on qualitative analysis, you'll find I was correct. Okay, sir. Uh, sir, another question. I'm sorry, I'm going back to the citation uh, thing again. We little digressed, but I, my question is still uh, stays mm -hmm. there. So you were mentioning about the paper of Churchill 79 and then a paper which is 2020 paper. So I understand that we we talk about 1979 and then give reference to 2020 to show that you know uh, that my work is updated one okay mm -hmm. but my question is slightly different here while i understand this aspect like say for example i am doing my work for my phd now i am looking for some determinants now i do uh, i find a paper which is an slr or maybe a scoping review wherein he has referred many papers which have refer and he has made categories of all those determinants now, uh, here is my question because the umpteen number of papers that this fellow has cited. Now, I, I'm not sure how can I add in all those uh, citations here. I mean, all those papers, how can I cite? Because say, SLR has say 35, 40 papers I've taken and then 35, 40 paper over and above the paper that I've chosen. So how do I address this? I will not respond to your query. I'll show you how people have done it. Okay. So, right. There okay. is a, a specific and very standard paper on this 10 steps of skill development and reporting a guide for researcher. Okay. I find this paper is very, very interesting. Uh -huh. While I was reading one of the dimension exploratory factor analysis, not this one, sample size. 
रिसर्च क्वेश्चन नो सैंपलिंग प्रोसीजर सैंपल साइज नो टेन स्टेप्स वेर सैंपल साइज दिस वन is not highlight determining sampling procedure not even this one exact data quality there is that paragraph this is not highlighted one otherwise um, just minute, allow me to tell you this is the one determining sample size mm -hmm. Did I miss that? Determining. Yeah, sample? there was something. Yes, determining it's, sample procedure. Yeah, yeah. Then the sample yes, size. Yes, yes, yeah. yes. It's, I, yes. I'm missing this. <laughs> yeah. When people have started looking at different procedure of sample sizes, this paper summarizes methodology very regarding uh, very regarding recommended sample sizes with expectations of stating that more participants should uh, more participants result. in more stable scale generally most scholars recommended a sample size which is at least 300 starting from 1979 then 2006 now you will be surprised to see there is a paper after 2006 there is a paper of 2003 and then again a 2006 what is the yeah. logic behind this these people have uh, find mm -hmm. I I can't see, say. If so. it is an alphabetical order, you will say first is M and then second one is H. Even so that is not, not holding true. Letter. No, <laughs> no. Right. So yes, they have again started from the chronological order, uh -huh. but they have also taken care of what is the authority of that paper. So when you start from Macrossi, has got the highest amount of citations, whereas this paper was published up to two thousand six. this paper was having less amount of citation this is how people have reacted to this particular problem and no, no, sorry, no, i'm sorry i didn't get i didn't get it I, I, probably i missed the point what you're trying to say just a minute recommending range from a sample size 50 mm -hmm. martlet is suggesting that 80 to 400 mm -hmm. this another paper is suggesting that Hmm. Carmerly and Lee, nineteen ninety two, provided one guide. This fifty is poor, or hundred is poor, or maybe two hundred is fair. You'll be mm -hmm. able to find your solution under under this paragraph. This paragraph is having all your solutions. This is not cited by somebody, mm -hmm. right? This is not cited. One paper has been cited by somebody else, but yes, mm -hmm. this is a perfect example of how people have resolved those queries. How to find a sequence? there are two three ways of how to find a sequence one people have started finding chronological way mm -hmm. but uh, chronological way has been opposed by many of the researcher why they are opposing this because they find somebody else who is very senior is getting more citation and somebody else like me who is very junior is getting lesser amount of citation so my paper will never come first yeah if i ask them to cite into the alphabetical order again uh, my name starts from k my surname mm -hmm. starts from k i'll not be yeah. able to come first yeah right and um, so they have find a way of looking at the number of citations what is your question if you are trying to define from the perspective of 79 to 2006 whichever paper has got most citation will have uh, will get the first number of first place of for citation and mm -hmm. whichever paper which you find is good but have got a lesser citation will be at last that paper might be published in 1979 okay Okay. Get it. All right. All right, sir. Okay. okay. Um, I think we should start for today's session. Otherwise, <laughs> we'll <laughs> start somewhere. Yeah. Okay. So I'll start from a bit. I know this systematic literature review has been covered by Sharani, ma'am, but I, I I don't have much amount of uh, much number of slides on this. So I'll start a bit about systematic literature review and then how these mechanic mechanized softwares are helping us. 
what are the things which need to be included and what are the things which need not to be included in systematic literature review that i'll be i'll be covering a very smaller part of that so this is a good source which i find if you are a young research scholar and if you are trying to do literature review you are into the second chapter read this book first then start writing literature review i'm sure your all the concepts will be changed right there are two more papers which i find they are very beautifully written if you are looking for meta analysis perspective or maybe systematic review perspective whatever this paper from uh, karina nilson is very good paper if you wanted to develop your understanding on how to do the literature review and how to report different literature reviews with the different formats with the different manners and karen fernandez extremely good paper a tutorial for new researcher so if you are a new researcher and if you have not read this paper you are missing something so do th these are the good sources if you are trying to write some literature review i th these are even if you if you want to if you do not want to read this uh, large book not more than uh, 150 pages or something you must read these two papers these two papers have summarized the complete learning from diana ridley like this is a paper uh, which i was discussing somebody was asking if this is not the part of uh, web of science or scopus right i'll come to that here is that glitch here is that part of that answer if this is not the part of scopus and web of science so this paper is also a good paper if you want if you are trying to write a systematic literature review or if you are trying to write a literature review even for your thesis right though this paper is not related to management business finances or any ways this paper is related to agricultural sciences i find this one is very beautiful written a very beautifully written paper so they have started writing with scoping a review protocol is defined planning like somebody was talking about a scopus they have plan to get the papers get the database from web of science identify the research process identification of search process not research search process and they were able to identify 478 total research papers and even they find there are two papers which are not part of the web of science but they have considered they are very important papers so they have added those paper manually over here manually at this stage even then they comes to screening part probably shalini ma'am has discussed in much details i'm not discussing these thing in these uh, that amount of detail so they were finally fine 389 papers were excluded three papers were duplicate probably full paper is not available or maybe they are not in the english language or maybe they are there are multiple reasons of that finally they have got 86 paper eligibility the qualitative paper or the quantitative because this paper was uh, performing meta analysis so they are looking for quantitative exactly quantitative paper no chance no criteria should be given to the qualitative paper conceptual paper or an essays so they have find two papers sorry they have find 27 papers were eligible right finally they have added this two to the 27 the total eligible paper becomes 29 and they have included 18 papers even out of those 29 35 are available only as 32% are available only as full text articles 20% are finally included based on their strength because they are the powerful strong paper so at least they have given this chance of these two paper chance uh, uh, to these two papers to be included to this bucket finally even when they have excluded this 18 paper there might be a possibility these two papers have been excluded but yes they have given it a full chance so this is why i was sharing this is why i was calling this is why i generally take so 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 sorry this last line they mm -hmm. eligible is n29 and then they included n18 it is over and above the 29 yes it uh, is out of this 29 Over and above this, right? It is twenty nine plus eighteen paper that they. No, 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 no. Out of twenty nine, only eighteen has been selected, based on their strength. Okay. Okay. Are finally included based on their strength. 
Okay, I got that, sir. Thank you. Yeah. So this is why I generally recommend to all, all the researchers, do not look at only Scopus perspective or Web of Science perspective or any other perspective. We need to look at the holistic perspective. If the paper is good, include that paper. And if it is a PhD thesis, somebody was asking like just a, a previous to the previous question, somebody was sharing if it is a PhD thesis, give a space, give a fair space to everyone. Do not look at ranking and rating. At least somebody will give you the chance, right? This is the limitation. Somebody has to give you the chance. If you have not published to an A category or a B category journal, then you'll never get a chance to be cited, right? So if we do not give chance to others, probably others won't give you chance. So this is what is a very humble request. Do not look at only A or A category or everything. It is equally difficult to publish even C category, right? So I'll not, I'm not going to discuss this SLR and narratives. Prisma framework, I believe you might have discussed uh, Shalinima might have discussed this reporting framework from Kocharen meta analysis framework. Now, this is what we wanted to discuss. Somebody was sharing Scopus, Web of Science, ABDC. Nowadays, there is much popular list which is called as ABS, CAPS ABS, Chartered Accountants ABS, CABS. Or you have included only a conference papers, or you have included the impact factor, which is greater than one, or you have included the papers, which is where you find H index is greater than one. Your empirical consideration, if you are doing SLR, then probably empirical consideration is not needed. If you are doing a meta analysis, then you need only empirical papers, country, continent, geographical area, everything. And that is, that is why I generally state a comment. I believe there is a popular quote from a movie, everything is fair in love and war. I simply extend that quote and I say, everything is fair in love, war and research, provided you must have a good justification of what you have done. You might be able to recall some of the papers, even with the quantitative approach, they have published with the sample size of 20 and you are collecting the data of 1200 and they are saying your sample size is less. Right, you must have a good justification, and I believe you will be able to get a paper publication of that. Uh, Professor Elena, there is, this is not a specific situation when to include conference paper, but yes, I would recommend if you are doing a meta analysis based paper, includes, include everything, not only conference paper, include everything conference, PhD thesis manuals, some researchers, some researches which have been never taken out from uh, drawers because they are not able to publish those. You must have a defensible justification and nothing is, nothing is a bad idea in terms of research. Everything is publishable provided there are only two things. One, you have got a good justification or second, you have got a good collaborator. <laughs> Sir, I have a question. Yes. Uh, that you know, uh, when we are collecting data, either for I mean research papers, either for SLR or uh, meta analysis, is it necessary to go for you know uh, the indices which are there, uh, Scopus based? Can't we collect uh, from other sources because you know many times these Scopus in, uh, based indexes they are not easily available uh, for the general public it from the base uh, from the Google Scholar itself. That's okay. not the challenge, but probably mentioning it, you have collected the criteria from Google Scholar will not be sufficient enough. Okay. Right. So you have to mention this. You have collected the data from uh, Google Scholar, but you have done a good amount of screening with those paper. Duplicates have been removed. Different language have been removed. This and that has been removed. You need to be very much clear on that on that methodology part. Okay. Otherwise, they won't go with you. So one more question. Suppose there has been one paper which was written in 2011, mm -hmm. for, say for SLR or meta-analysis in my area. And I want to do meta-analysis in the same field. But mm -hmm. uh, can I do it now in 2021? Yes, but passed? just look at this. Is, is, is the sufficient number of papers have been published after 2011? Mm -hmm. So if more than 100 papers have been published after 2011, then you, can, you, you must go for that. And if you find only 10, 20, or maybe 50 papers have been published, probably it's not a good idea to go for that. Thank you, sir. Thank you. This is what is the essence of today's discussion. This is what we wanted to discuss today. Uh, types of review paper, right? 
framework based paper so they are the very much popular framework tmcc or tccm is a simple different arrangement of tmcc theory method construct and construct and edo is at another antecedents decision and outcome they are framework based paper you can also work with theme based systematic literature reviews however nowadays are very difficult to find a theme based slr but yes people are doing it still most of the people are doing slr in uh, theme based slr in terms of a different ways review aiming for theory or theoretical model a good amount of paper uh, have been published after 2010 if you just recall a theory like tem or maybe doi or maybe any other theory for that respect bibliometric analysis you can use these softwares biblio shiny was viewer or maybe publish or perish they are also very they are also getting much popularity on that front ethnography and ethnography papers ethnography you'll have to learn on the class of uh, class on 7th but we'll be learning today max qd and how to use max qd for framework based paper right so this is what is today's objective this is what is today's ultimate objective of the discussion right i will not be taking more time i believe you might have discussed everything out of these star based framework or different other frameworks spider and all other frameworks i i believe you you, you all of you have a discussion on this I didn't get this question, uh, uh, Professor Malina, uh, Alina Marluk. Okay, got it. <laughs> Probably Shalini Ma'am is a better person to respond to you on this point. So we look uh, one or two papers based on this. framework discussion and all other ways and then we'll directly move to that so this uh, is a sir can you share that presentation also uh, with us sir, the, group, the last ones are yes one yes sir this yes, one yes i'll share everything i i believe i'm sharing whatever i'm uh, presenting that's right sir that's right thank you so much sir don't worry i'll do that so th there is a paper from jbr journal of business research market innovation a literature review and next research directions there are some good good number of papers in this i i'll open a few papers and that i'll demonstrate you, you those papers how to convert how to extract the tables like those papers uh the role of organism integration theory in marketing science a systematic review and research agenda another paper on systematic review and research agenda this one is very good paper probably towards the end we'll try to take separate 20 to uh, 15 to 20 minutes the taxonomy of research gaps because this is nowadays is getting much popularity on that way and this is another very beautifully written paper on home sharing in market home sharing in marketing and tourism at tipping point what to do what do we know how do we know and where should be heading past present and future everything is combined home sharing in marketing and tourism correct so th these are the papers which are sharing you can see this paper is having a antecedent decision outcome edo framework and then tcm framework correct i'll be sharing you one excel file this file i generally use while i demonstrate how to do slr systematic literature review we'll be doing a bits and pieces of this uh, excel sheet so what is most important for all of us is serial number and then probably starting from year uh, name of journal abdc category title author and everything once you complete this excel sheet once you completely fill this excel sheet with uh, any number of papers i believe you'll be able to complete an slr on this but right now we'll be looking at some parts of this i have created a project this project is called as powershell for you 
So just after the session, once you wanted to do, once you wanted to open a project, I'll be sharing this file. The name of this file is PowerShell. PowerShell.mx20. Simply double click on this file and you'll get this blank file. Once you get this blank file, your objective is to import some papers on this to this project and that will probably help you to doing a literature review. So I have selected a folder of scale development and I'll be doing this uh, today's discussion, today's literature review and scale development. And I'll be following a TMCC framework for this purpose. So I've selected these four or five papers. I'm importing these papers to my Max QDA project. So there are questions. So does the Journal of Business Review accept human resource management journal papers? Yes, JBR accepts paper. Journal of Business Review accepts the paper on all the domains, but probably their objectives or their aims are different. So if you are hardcore talking about uh, employee satisfaction, employee retention, and uh, then all is a bit difficult. Obje re read the objectives of the journal, aims of the, the journal, and I'm sure you will be able to get it. So what I did, how I started this project, yeah, JB here. How I started this project, once you import these files, these PDF files here in this project, you will be able to see, can you help me in making a correct sequence of these? I'm removing the document sequence. Everything is here. I have taken the, them, but can you help me? What should be first and what should be at the end? So I was starting with the limitation or future direction or what do you think? From where I should start or from where I should end? So these are the codes of uh, SLR, codes of an SLR research paper. What do you think? What should be the first one? You can start with year followed by year. author. Author. Or author followed by year? Year followed by author. Author year. Okay. Then? Uh, uh, objectives. Gaps. Type of article. Type of article. Type of article should be after the objectives or before the objectives. Uh, before the objective. The and objective. Then, and then gaps and then objectives. No objectives and then gaps. I think after gaps. Objectives. Be and then gap, gap first and then objective. First gap should be. Gap there. first then objective. No objectives first and then gap. As for me, I don't know. Okay. <laughs> okay, I'm I'm of I'm following you. Yeah. Right. Then uh then limitation future direction is later. Then probably we need to start this methodology section also after this gap. Correct. Data collection method, Correct. independent variable, dependent variable. MIMO is mediator or moderator, if you find any, then scale. Did they use questionnaire? After the scale, did they use a questionnaire or this was a secondary data? Sampling element. Sampling element, yeah. Sample size. Sample size should be after elements. Right. And then? Analy analytical tools. Analytical tools. No, no, type of data. Type of data. Yes, type of data. Primary data or secondary data, I believe this should come uh, just after this uh, uh, data collection, data collection method. method. Yeah, yeah. Where is type of data now? 
type of data is under sample size, below sample size. Mm -hmm. yes. So this should come here. Also, where do we place type of country and market? Because we also need to talk about uh, context. Yes. So they'll be the part of uh, focus country and number of countries should be the part of methodology section. What do I mean by type of market? It's like scoping, right? You're scoping the paper in this type of market. As if, I mean, right? Maybe a emerging economy or a emerging emerging economy. economy or, or yes, maybe you are talking about consumer markets, luxury market, or B2B market. Which type of market, which type of um, uh, setting you are talking about? So you would like to place it where in this case? Okay. Pardon you, question please. So I was just wondering, where would you like to place this under, towards the end, is it, of the methodology section? What, what um, I didn't get your question. Okay, okay. So, uh, you carry on, sir. Carry on. Carry on. What she is asking, where do we place type of market? Type of market is again part of methodology. When you talk about uh, methodology, which type of country you are entering in. Mm -hmm. So, the focus country and everything is part of there. Correct. So I will start with the document system again. We close all the documents. We'll start with this front. And first one is skill development approach from content analysis perspective. So, so uh, can I interrupt for a minute? Yes, 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 please. So, uh, sir, instead of using an Excel sheet, creating that table and entering information we have created these codes which was the title of our each uh, column mm -hmm. and now we are uh, kind of uh, tagging each document or a research paper to these correct codes. am i correct, correct. so uh, uh, i want to know whether we'll be able to uh, generate an output file of excel sheet as per that uh, format that we used to do it before we'll be able to generate some at least some output don't worry <laughs> okay, okay, great, great, sir, great. We'll be able to generate. Sir, amazing, are, amazing. So, uh, if we are uh, relating or talking about some theories mm -hmm. and we are adding that to over here, so where do we place some theories? Means if we are talking say about, for example, say, for example, there is another say, screenshot, just a minute. Say, for example, you're talking about introduction and then theory. So, maybe a digital or activism or uh, feminism or whichever uh, whichever type of theory you are talking about or maybe uh, TAM or TBP theory of plant behavior, whatever theory you are talking about. Maybe I have managed it in a different way. You can have this another method of doing this. Right, right. So that would come immediately after the yes, introduction. Yes, yes, yes. Definitely. Okay. You'll have to cross connect this. Whatever type of tables you wanted to generate with that front, you'll be able to generate. There. Thank you. Right. So this is the first paper which we are reading. And uh, author conducted a content analysis. What I get? Data collection method. Content analysis is data collection or uh, analysis? Uh, it's tool? thematic analysis. What should I call it? It would be coming under the LR, analytical I suppose. Tools. Analysis. Content analysis will come under analytical tools. Analytical tools, yeah on a new scale development article appearing to the Journal of Consumer Psychology during this author have analyzed and discussed characteristics of an exploratory and confirmatory factor analysis. Exploratory and confirmatory factor analysis. Again, the part of uh, analytical tools, this one. Procedures in these scale development studies with respect to the sample characteristics, factorability, uh, extraction method. These are the name of analytical tools again. The author uncovered a variety of specific practices that were at the variance at the current literature. What, which, what, which line we are reading here? The authors uncovered a variety of specific practices that were at the variance of the current literature on factor analysis, or structural equation modeling. What is this? Gap. It is a gap or it is Finding. a field gap? It is a contribution it, of this paper. It is a contribution. So probably we need to uh, incorporate 
uh, one new code contribution. So I'll connect this with contribution. Uh, they make recommendations for best practices in skill development research and counseling psychology using exploratory and confirmatory factor analysis. Yes. Counseling Sorry. psychology. Future counseling direction. psychology. Did we get anything? Future direction. No, this is not. This is they have done. This is not future direction. Recommendation for best practices. Make a recommendation for best practices in skill development research. Sir, will it not come under the recommendation? Finding, finding, yeah. Finding. Maybe a, finding, a kind of recommendation. Uh, finding. Don't have anything like this. So I'll also connect this with contribution. Correct? And then reading an article is very tedious. So just a question. Normally, uh, we have a tendency either to read the abstract and jump to the conclusion and future directions because it's very taxing for SLR going through 100 papers. So, so like just a question, what do you advise? Like we should go read the entire paper word by word. If you are exactly doing SLR, I, I would recommend to read the paper. Not okay. word by word, but at least read the paper. Right, sir. Right. So this was the first paper we have ended up and the second paper development of a scale to measure memorable tourism experience, the quality experience provided to a customer, which were included memorable directly determine a business ability to general revenues. However, the extent tourism literature has provided limited explanation this and that yes. Gap. 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 We have got a gap. This one. Thus, the goal of the present study was to develop objectives. Objective. Develop a valid and reliable measurable skill to assess the under effective management of the memorable experience. Correct? Sure. Mm -hmm. Objective. Where is that? Research it's objective. So Churchill 1979 recommended a process. We developed a 24 item uh, memorable tourism scale, experiences. Scale, scale. Scale, scale. 24 item memorable tourism experience scale is part of scale that we believe in applicable to most destination areas. The scale comprises seven domain hedonism, refreshment, hedonism. Measurement or uh, variables. They are not independent or dependent, but yes, they are variables. Variables, variables. And novelty. Or maybe if you want it to be very summarized, if you want it to be very crisp, select them one by one. I'm not going to do that. I'll be selecting only dependent variable. The data support this uh, dimensional structural, this dimensional type of data, this dimensional structural of the memorable tourism experience, as well as the internal consistency as validity, content, construct, convergent and discriminant validity was established. Analytical tool. Sample size can each. Theoretical managerial implications of this study as a result and discussed. Okay. Now we'll start reading this paper. You can discuss these or you can again connect with these different variables. Hedonism, construct definition, you can again connect with under uh, dependent or independent variable. Mm. Where is sample size, scale validation? Just connect. Sample size. 
empty model derived from this model fit no sample size. Sir, I have a question that uh, this coding system, uh, this MXQDA is itself given or you have created? I have created. Then sir, uh, we should also include the theoretical framework. Yes. That is why I have already uh, demonstrated you another way, already shown you another way of doing this. This could be, this will be your style, how you want to do it. Okay. I'm creating a large size of a table. Probably you don't need that large size of a table. Say for example, uh, you are looking for this paper, market or market, uh, market innovations from seven. This seven Molnar is a very popular author for market orientation or these type of articles. Just go to the first table. And he has not looked at very what he did he corrected for he connected when first market innovation is the first code how Vargo has defined that market innovation how uh, Kelsberg has defined market innovation simply the definition so this is the first table probably we need not to do this much of exercises what we are doing right now but this is only one table then he has started with other set of tables also like he has started with the terms and different phrase, phrases which has been used during the, uh, during that. Another table could be, he has uh, uh, used a combination of bibliometric analysis, clusters and everything is a part of uh, bibliometric analysis, not exactly from the literature review part, lit SLR. This one is another paper from Justin Paul, the role of organism integration, theory in marketing science. Now look at the type of tables which he has, uh, this professor has made in terms of a paper. You can see this Prisma protocol or whatever is the name, whatever name of protocol they have followed. The important thing is journal name, number of articles, Clarivate analytics impact factor or ABDC reference or not. And then this journal has identified these number of papers of that. Country publication, number of publication, again, a kind of bibliometric analysis table, subfield of marketing, number of articles, main statistical method. Can you see these, they have created these tables for separate purposes. How many papers are using a structural equation modeling, hierarchical multiple regression, EFA and CFA, path analysis, ANCOVA and these type of things? Right. Whatever we are doing, we are doing it for complete paper. Once you extract this, you need not to like um, convert, converting them into a smaller tables will be very easier for you. How many papers are with non-probability sampling and how many papers are with probability sampling? Isn't it? It is very impressive paper by one of the author. I'm forgetting his name. I'll send you that paper the type of impressive tables and the type of impressive charts he has made for uh, um, an SLR paper. This, he has created another table on number of articles and outcome variables. So this is specifically your choice, how you want to extract your tables. That's it. No one else could decide about your paper. Sir, is it due, uh, based on a sheer, uh, you know, creativity, we can say? It's not creativity, it is your idea, how you wanted to shape your idea, how you wanted to develop your idea. Okay, sir. Sir, one more uh, question that, you know, uh, many a times people try to put in all the things they know, SLR, bibliometric, then meta-analysis in just one paper. Is it not, uh, you know, one should uh, at least try to focus only on one uh, kind of methodology? What is the correct approach? Earlier this was correct, whatever you are saying, but uh, whatever you are uh, saying, but nowadays people are encouraging mixed method and multiple methods. So earlier uh, I have seen an author, he has written a paper on one only one concept. And then that concept has been applied for regression analysis, the same concept for EFA, the same concept for CFA, the same concept for bibliometric, the same concept for all methodologies. Correct. But nowadays this is not promoted much. Yes. So SLR in one paper, bibliometric in another and meta in third. Yes. Thank you. Uh, when you find limitations in future researches, you can find several limitations of this current study need to be highlighted. First, 
the data were collected using convenience sampling for college students enrolled in university located in Midwestern state in United States. <coughs> Thus the limited ability to generalize the study results in So does this uh, method of using MaxQDA um, negate the uh, necessity of using uh, um, the reference uh, reference management system like Mendeley? Pardon your question, please. So if we are uh, recording all the parameters here using MaxQDA, mm -hmm. then do we need to use a reference uh, management system like Mendeley or something else? Yes, that is needed because for this can help you in extracting the table. Finally, you will have to create those citations and all. Though qualitative analysis softwares are all also able to generate uh, citations and references for your purpose, but that is very, very difficult, very, very challenging. Instead of them using uh, uh, this uh, reference management softwares are pretty much easier in that comparison. Thank you. So just another question in continuation with the, what mm -hmm. she had asked like what is an advantage of using max qda when we can do the same in the excel sheet in excel sheet you can copy and paste the da this data that is for sure but probably where from where you have copied this um, reaching back to the location is not easy right you can simply whatever material i am creating right now you can do this you can simply copy and paste but probably paper number 1 and from where is this line in paper number one, when you are looking for that, that particular front is missing in Excel sheet. Moving back to the connection is very, very challenging in that way. Did you get? Yes, sir. But like uh, what if in the Excel sheet also, I keep my citations and uh, means if I, when I'm drawing from this paper, say for, for example, this paper, I keep the citation and a track of this. So like I'm, I'm unable to understand what added advantage Max QD is giving in addition to means like referencing also, we have to go back to uh, Mendeley and do it. So it's only what we are doing is adding the coding and getting the output done. Uh, so I, I get your question because you are not, you have simply copied and pasted this material. Say, for example, you are trying to find this data collection method in paper number five, yes. where this is written, SEM has been used. Right. When you want to look at that, paper number five, you will have to open that paper and then probably in separate PDF, you have highlighted those things or this and that different ways you could have managed that. You yeah. cannot maintain that track record here, but if you are using Max QDA, simply paper number five and simply scroll it down from where you have copied limitation, from where you have copied which part of the paper will be easier for you. Okay. This is not possible in Excel or in fact any other software. Okay. Oh, thank you. Okay. So I have connected a good amount of things. Mm while finding support of this and that, in addition to incorporating the concept of this. So say, for example, future researchers could seek to identify specially defined factors that enhance one memorability of tourism experiences. This is the part of future direction. Done? Yes. So we are able to code a few uh, and we have not received for anything for type of market. Okay, what is the country? Mm. Is it easily identifiable? Sir, in the set of uh, papers, are we actually using TCCM or radio framework as of now? Or we are just. What is your choice? It? So I would go for TCCM. I'm doing it uh, because of my choice. You can do it because of your different choice. You, if you wanted to do it in AD, ADU or if you wanted to do it with a different one, you can do that. Okay. So in that case, we will actually have to, you know, uh, create the code, proper codes as theory, uh, concept, the, the full form of TCCM, right? Mm -hmm. and, and then connect each, uh, each uh, line or chunk of lines to that code. Yes, you can do that too. Okay. Okay. 
Sir, will you be showing us the output also today? Yes, 100%. Okay. Otherwise, this will be the wastage of time. <laughs> I'm not able to find the country where they have conducted the survey. Okay, I'll find it in... So if we don't find, they say we have to take the first author's country. Is that right? Like, no. No? Okay. Maybe I'm from India. My co-author is from USA and one of his <laughs> friends from uh, Finland. And I've collected all the data from India and you say first author is from USA or maybe from Finland. Will that be a good idea? No. Right? Okay. So I'll, I'm just looking for uh, components of MTE to develop a measurement of scale development was Churchill recommended improving the scale process, improving the guidelines. Okay. For the research in addition, where this study was conducted, a specific construct domain, a set of 58 MTE items under 60 construct domains, experiences, leisure research, experiencing neither a measurement scale nor a conceptual model of MTE to assist in developing a construct. Analytical tools. Analytical tools, we have coded good number of things. 62 individual open-ended questions. Type of questions. Questionnaire. Or this could also be connected to scale. The main purpose of this study was to include Object. teams to conduct in this we have already connected. Uh, while conducting the content of this responses, 62 different words have been identified. Again, part of methodology, 62 words. I'm looking for uh, country, the context. So data collection data. by US, US college students. Obtain from US college students. Probably US is country. Mm. Focus of country. College students are uh, sample element. Large Midwestern University. The students were enrolled in 12 classes spread across different ways and um, they have been given some Additional benefits of 50 US dollars, seven point Likert scale. The participants were first asked to recall MTE. Okay. I believe this is sufficient if we create one table. Will that be okay or should I code for everything? Sample size with us is me. Sample size uh, we have got. Methodology, different type of methodologies, whatever type of methodologies you have received. So, we will be simply going to the codes. Export code system. This will be the first approach. What is the code system? Say, for example, we'll say code system in terms of SYS. This will help us in creating the basic Excel sheet, whatever type of data we are receiving. XLS and save. Include memos? No, not right now. Code system. Sir, include memos. Me kya aana tha, kya? Whatever memos you have connected. Can, can you recall? There is something which is related to. Do you want to add a memo here? This one. Do you okay. have several specific notes? If you want to include those memos, we, notes, are, we notes, do not have any memos in this project. So yes. this is the sheet. This is the code sheet. And now you might be thinking this is a code sheet with this particular uh, maybe vertical integration, vertical direction. How to convert this code sheet into the horizontal direction? Transpose. Transpose, correct. Right click here. Go to special. Select transpose and click on OK. Now you have got everything 
number of countries. Now let's see which type of data is available for our reference. I'll go to the documents, right click, and we'll identify, first we'll click on code segment. These are the different code segments from different documents. I will export this sheet, code segments one. Done. So this is the first paper. I'm simply doing it for my ease. This is the first paper probably. I'll G color it. Sir, if we have several papers uh, of the same year, how do when how do we recognize over here? Sir? What is that? Uh, say for two thousand year two thousand six. Uh, while doing this. Uh... This is this is what is the name of file which you have given to the software. No, 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 no. I'm. I, I got your idea. I got your yes, question. Yes. I have mentioned this 2006 skill development. Okay, okay, if you okay. find two different <laughs> papers, 2006, this is this is how you have maintained your folder. Right, right. right? right. This is nothing which is done by software. Okay. Correct. So. Sir, what is this beginning and the end? It's just uh, 2.220. Yes, sir. And, and this one? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And weight score again? Right, sir. From where, which point of this, this is a canvas sheet actually, from where, which point you have started connecting this code and from which point you have ended that. So this is typically for software, not recommended for our uses. Right, sir. Modified by, modified by everything, created by whom coverage area is important. So I lost my connection. Can you please uh, reiterate as to how we got the code system Excel sheet exported? Just a simple step. That, that's very simple. Simply go to the documents, right click here, click on code segments and click on this Excel. And, and no, no, sir, code system, code systems. Export code system. Code system, go to codes and export code system. This one, export okay, code system. Okay. okay. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Now, this is our first sheet from the first document. The name of document, I'm simply copying this one. so that we'll be able to recall these codes belongs to which document. And then probably we are having these analytical tools, contribution of these many things. Copy them. Now in whatever sequence, analytical tools, these two points, analytical tools, these two points, contribution from the one paper, contribution, then delete this first sheet. You can select the whole sheet press alt and ORE together and give it a size of 50. This will be a beautifully composed sheet, right? Otherwise you'll be stuck somewhere. Then there is another paper, which is this 2012 development. And I'll copy this again after two cell because I know there are two entries and then author, year, type of article and everything, gap, research and everything. I'll copy and paste or maybe you can copy and paste them one by one also. It is not necessary. You need to copy and paste them in uh, one go to an Excel sheet and then copying and pasting to the same Excel sheet. Uh, gaps, 
or is there any other gap? No, this one is the only gap. Copy it and find it. We'll find it towards the end. No, not towards the end in the beginning. This one. At the search objective. There is a scale. So we can use edge lookup and we look up both here. Yes, you can. We can do that too. You are 100% correct. Sir, so this Excel sheet we have to create, the software will not create it for us. Software has created and uh, mapping and output for you. Okay. You have to simply do a copy paste. That's it. Analytical tools. So this output, is it not in Excel? It looks like in tabular form. This one? Yeah. It's, it's an Excel. It's an Excel. Then I could use the same file, right? Rather than you know pasting you can, this stuff in the other other sheet, right? Hundred percent, you can do that. Okay. I'm just doing it for my ease. Country is U.S. College is student and two hundred. Country is focus. Country is U.S. Simple element is uh, college student and sample size is 200. Limitations were two, collecting using convenience sampling, collected using convenience sampling. Uh, limitations and then future directions done so so quick one sir so all the columns that we have in this excel sheet in which we are pasting it i could i could get all the columns created through max QDA, right i could have the author year type of article everything also there 100 I have, things i have just just for my ease i have done a lesser selection on that front Okay. And that is why okay. you can see a less number of columns. Otherwise, everything could have been could have been done through MaxQD and everything could have been generated through MaxQD. Yeah, so I would get the whole Excel through MaxQD, right? It's far okay. easier way. It looks like yes. far easier. Yes. Than typing in Excel. Okay, sir. Thank you. Right, so your whole sheet of TMCC, you wanted to produce how many different type of tables or different type of charts you can create those from here. What? You wanted to see it in one go. is far larger than this. Right. So this is how you can manage your literature review and probably why I would recommend to use uh, Max QDA or any reference manager software. What is the general problem with all the research? And this, this in fact, I have faced, faced this problem. Once you start writing, once you start reading research paper, when your uh, supervisor recommends you 
to read some good research papers, to do this and that, and to this and that. You start reading good number of papers, you start highlighting and on hard copies, are lots, lots of stuff. But when you actually sit to write your researches, when you finally sit to write your uh, thesis or maybe a research paper or whatever stuff it is, you'll find it very, very difficult to find. I can recall I have read four or five lines on sample size or I can recall everything, whatever I have done. I can recall a lots of things, whatever I have done, but I could not find those materials. So if you wanted to find your material back, use any reference manager or use any qualitative analysis software. You, you need to simply double click or in fact, qualitative analysis softwares are also helping you some other ways. It is not only coding in other ways. Say, for example, you have read this and you find this line is very important. You can, you are having highlighters. The same things are also available in Mendeley. However, Mendeley does not generate some uh, self-driven tables for you. But I would always recommend to use a reference manager. While the third year of my PhD, I stuck somewhere. My PhD supervisor has given me a folder of about uh, 110 research papers. And he has given me a month, he has given me a time of uh, two months. I read all of them. But then it becomes, uh, when it becomes very challenging, when he asked, where is this material? So I started doing everything by cataloging. I maintained a catalog box and this paper will be used in methodology. This paper will be used in this and that section. So that was very, very difficult in that front. These softwares are like uh, uh, generally used for assisting you so that you could find your material easily. So simply a scrolling will be easier. Just you scroll it and this is what is an analytical tool. This is what is in this and that and everything could be identified very easily. And you need to simply click on a code and you find this is what is an analytical tool. This is what is a contribution of this paper. This is what is another contribution of this paper. And that is this is how you can contribute to your researches maintaining a complete SLR file, maintaining a complete SLR uh, sheet will always help you. Highlighting a text in Mandalay will remain highlighted in MaxQDA. Any experience in this? Uh, um, no, I, I, do, I don't have any experience on this, but yes. you can export some highlighted material from Mandalay and those material will be export, uh, will remain highlighted in Max Studio or in fact any other software. Use only one. If you use multiple softwares, this will, like you'll stuck. <laughs> Don't use multiple softwares that friend. Right? Then you can also talk about, there is a specific term, if you can recall, lexical search. Where is that? this one, lexical search for all your research papers. Say, for example, you are looking for, are you talking about, uh, there, there is a, a large size of folder and you are looking for uh, the papers or from the, for the sample size of US, right? Simply run the search. Six documents have been analyzed and you can find three papers have found us so if you are having a large number of papers probably three papers you you need not to stuck i was doing this because i i was uh, trying to manually do it now us or maybe finding a country or maybe finding a sample size is not a big hurdle for anyone you need to simply type some popular type of countries and this way if, even if you are having a folder of more than 100 uh, papers simply type us india canada uh, australia uh, so sir this this us us is searched in the whole text of the paper by the software by the software great amazing you can find these us have been found three times in the stated project sir right the project uh, that we are working on yes out of this project okay. these, these six papers okay right right this lexical search in that way is very powerful tool say for example <coughs> sorry you wanted to search about how many papers have used structural equation modeling? Correct? Tell me if I'm uh, typing a wrong uh, structural. Double L. Spelling is correct? Double L. Yes. Double L-I-N-G. <laughs> no, 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 it's okay. <laughs> right? 
so these many papers or maybe these many documents does have a structural equation modeling now what could be done what could be done there is one way of auto code search there is another way of auto code search result or there is another way of you can select everything by pressing control a and where is the country the, uh, sorry where is the analytical tool analytical tool you can simply drag and drop them in analytical tool no i'm not able to drag and drop them in analytical tool yes i can i can do that from here this uh, code and i can select just 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 see the analytical tool how many codes we have three correct and you can do that analytical tools this one auto code 23 document segments coded 23 plus 3 how many codes we have now is it visible on the screen analytical tools yes sir now 23 have been added initially it was have been added so this is how this can help you in generating your codes and the complete sheet earlier i was doing it manually that is why you might be thinking it is a cumbersome activity correct <laughs> sir ek bar step repeat karna please I'll, I'll, i'll do that i'll do that say for example you are looking for uh, how many papers because these are the papers most of the papers must have been followed exploratory factor analysis confirmatory factor analysis and structural equation modeling correct so i'll go to the lexical search we will delete this structural equation modeling start the new entry and this one is confirmatory factor analysis then run search and these many papers have got confirmatory factor analysis simply select any one press control a go there and select i were only analytical tools or sample size or question ir or primary data or these type of things could have been searched say for example if you are trying to go for uh, what is that future recommendation or findings of the paper or conclusion of the paper that won't be a suitable idea correct you can also change this instead of zero before and zero after the word if i am select if you are doing this zero and zero only this word is been coded but if you check on sentence this whole sentence could have been coded for this confirmatory factor analysis simply go to quotes and 15 document segments have been coded can we see that analytical tools does have 41 41 yes so how much time it has created it has taken to code the, give a code of analytical tools less than a minute right so earlier i was doing it manually that is why you might be thinking this is a very cumbersome activity why we are doing this why we are using the software am i correct sir, or not sir sir a, sir a quick question now yeah. when we have done the lexical search and put it in the code it said you know as many documents been coded but in terms of documents we have only six or seven documents that we have so why right. it would say as many documents i am not clear on that uh why it would say as many documents this was, like this for the any document segments these many 20 15 segments in different documents if you can see all of these codes are not in one document this one is develop is having 29 codes this another document is having 18 this document is having 5 simply double click on this document and what are the codes which this document we are able to generate analytical tool and once you click there confirmatory factor analysis is find in this document right while uh, once you done this coding once you have done this uh, lexical search analysis and everything you will be able to find these types of codes from all these documents this square is having uh, what is the code in square this is not saying number of documents have been coded this is saying segments in documents have been coded no when we have analytical tool as 41 that means 41 times in these uh, you know chosen uh, six papers that we have taken 41 mm -hmm. times analytical tools code has been used am i correct yes 41 times analytical tools code have been used out of these whole six documents Okay. Only one document out of this whole project. 
Correct. Okay. Okay. Yes. Thank you. Got it. Sir, another question. Uh, does this lexical search also works on the references in a in one particular uh, research paper, or does it exclude references? This works on references also. Okay, this is so a if, software. Uh, this uh, cannot uh, differentiate. This is not a plagiarism software right. to differentiate. Uh, right. So probably right. once after doing these uh, codings, you'll have to explore the whole projects and then you'll have to, uh, like if you find any coding have been done in references, you'll have to manually remove them. Very, very the suitably identified problem. Thank you. Yeah. You can also have some complex coding query when you do this for your research projects. Right, so... However, this will be very difficult for understanding what type of uh, function you are looking for. Friends who are happy is example here. Or you are looking with the different sets and everything will be coded in one go or overlapping with the different projects. Only one code. But this is a very, very complex process. Uh, you can use this. But I believe if you are doing this first time, if you are doing this very first time, you will be, there are good amount of chances you can misuse this, right? So when you talk about function, do not select any other function apart from near, because near will help you in connecting happy and friends. If you select these intersections, probably you will be missing something. Or maybe outsider connection will mislead your researches. So simply go to the near and everything, every chunk will be selected with that way. Right? Now, this is talking about all activated code. Uh, number of country is an activated code. Otherwise, you can see this. All activated codes are disappeared. Mm -hmm. So once you can select all the codes and then select all activated code, all the codes will appear here and paraphrase segments, paragraph, code of segment, code B segment, include subcodes and everything, and click on start. This is a very similar to auto code, but again, I would not recommend to do this if you're not expert of using MaxQDA. If you are an expert of MaxQDA, then you can do that. If you're not expert of doing this, do not look at with this process, otherwise, you will stuck somewhere and probably you will distort the process, whatever you are doing. So I'm clicking on cancel and deselecting all the documents and all the codes. This process is not recommended until and unless you achieve an expert level, right? Reset coding query could have been done. Summary grades. We have seen multiple times. You can create a summary grades. Uh, summary grades. You can see analytical tools have got for these documents. This document has got most of the summary, most of the uh, grades, most of the material. We have coded only three, uh, two documents. We have coded, and then all these documents have been coded by the software itself. So this is another way of representing your literature review. Like you have seen these paper. If it is about theory. If it is about theoretical contribution, if it is about uh, conceptual understanding, if it is about satisfaction or hypothesis testing or positive or negative or significant or non-significant, you can summarize in that particular way. These many papers on probably theory of plant behavior have been talked about. And then out of these many papers, say for example, apart from here, you say uh, theory of plant behavior talks about uh, customer satisfaction theory of plan in terms of outcome. Theory of plant behavior talks about uh, customer retention. Theory of plant behavior talks about these. Instead of these codes, you can use other codes and then this is a good representation for you. You can convert this in terms of a number also. Okay, that's a different thing, correct. You can create summary tables based on this. There is another very impressive tool if you talk about, and many of you might be seeing that option, and many of you might be thinking, why I'm not talking about paraphrasing? It's, isn't it?
so paraphrasing se dar lagta hai na <laughs> but probably this is a good to go once you are reading that research paper doing your paraphrasing it is not a system generated paraphrasing let me uh, give you that assurance this is not a system generated paraphrasing and you will not be caught under plagiarism you select anything and you can do uh, convert into a paraphrase no this is a different way of looking at paraphrasing you have you'll have to press control shift or p as a shortcut or otherwise you can click on this paraphrase and this will be activated once you click on any material once you select any material so you can write in your own language construct definition object classification attribute classification on this so variable x is having relationship with y however y is pretending to be alone right and click on okay you will be able to see these paraphrases here at the right column right what is the use of these paraphrases once you read like if you are uh, if you are writing if you are transcribing something say for example you are uh, converting a speech to the transcription you uh, you are writing you are, your document based on that so probably writing everything as it is whatever has been said whatever uh, is been uh, recorded in terms of a video or whatever has been said in terms of a paper probably will not be a good idea so we 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 do do these paraphrasing for that purpose this is not an automated paraphrasing so you need not to worry so that means if we have to analyze a uh, maybe annual report or a speech or maybe uh, a a photograph or a video then it can help us it will create a transcript for us and we can transcripts could be created by other way also but this paraphrasing is simply converting in or maybe saying something in your own language yeah that i got it but it yeah. can be used as a transcript yes, to it could, it could act do as a content analysis correct, correct, correct. Yes. and then finally after doing these uh, paraphrasing because these uh, if you are writing a literature review these paraphrasing is very important i believe all of you will be able to understand the importance of paraphrasing in that term and then you can convert these categorize yeah, these yeah. paraphrases these are the details these details could be hided or you can incorporate some uh, codes also you can create some new codes also for these paraphrasing terms or that could be utilized that could be analyzed with the completely different perspective variable x is having you can you see this variable x is having a relationship this is the paraphrase and this is a paraphrase segment which has been paraphrased in this paragraph correct though it has some implications indicating this can help you in understanding that fact right you can create separate codes you can create a new code on these paraphrases you can remove this analysis part and you can report it as it is in your specific terms and you can export it to a word file you can export it to excel file and use these contents use this material anywhere where you want it to use right so i'm not recommending yeah. system generated paraphrasing so that you'll be having some uh, misleading senses or misleading meaning of the material but yes paraphrasing in terms of definition paraphrasing in terms of different material is 100% allowed because you are not writing you are not copying this with the ill intention you are understanding you are reading this definition and then you are writing this definition in your own words so this way this paraphrasing is 100% allowed this is sir, how is it different from memo hello yeah how is it different from memo memo or... is a memo is a, a, a multimedia content memo memo is a combination of text visuals videos connections diagrams everything okay. whereas this is only text and this is having this paraphrasing is also having a limitation of 255 characters including spaces okay. they are not uh, available for uh, unlimited space uh, paraphrasing i deactivated otherwise you can write only 255 characters for more than that you'll have to start you'll have to open another paraphrasing paragraph but yes this will definitely help you once you select this paragraph and do it uh, do this paraphrasing in your own words then another paragraph and then another paragraph and finally export this paraphrasing 
or maybe there is a paraphrase matrix also which i which i personally find is uh, less of use categorization paraphrases is much of use so these are the paraphrases simply export them in terms of word and these words will be having in microsoft word again this was the document and this was the paraphrase i'll simply select this paraphrase open a new document because i want to convert my own script right click here and paste with the help of text only so this is the first paragraph this is the second paragraph and everything is now in my own terms in my own words nothing has been influenced from and there is no uh, act of plagiarism also correct this is super Can awesome sir understand? thank you yes pardon please there is one question yeah sir i was saying that this uh, as i understand you can correct me when i'm wrong that paraphrasing can be very useful for thematic analysis also 100% Where... in a content analysis thematic analysis and any analysis okay okay because every time we are looking for contents in our own words what software is able to like even if you are doing uh, with uh, with the help of other softwares even if you are doing some thematic analysis and some auto generated softwares are uh, auto generated contents are available for your reference that's okay but that auto generated content is available in their own in the language uh, um, in the language as original document is right so you'll have to do this for paraphrasing purpose and exporting these paraphrasing and then finally converting the whole document in your language in your terms will be will always be a good idea so apart from literature review you will be able to do this front also and sir it will give me more in depth analysis also better grasp on the uh, topic and the paper also right yes you can create better graphs conceptual maps could have been created on that particular front sir what is the limitation of this uh, you said uh, paraphrasing 255 characters 255 characters okay yeah. then probably you can select one paraphrasing for one uh, one sentence and that will be easier go this is india <laughs> we are not in us <laughs> correct so once you go to the code relationship browser we are talking about all codes and we are having two heavy codes one is uh, yes there is one more impressive thing yes i could recall that mm -hmm. so say for example you are trying to create two different tables you are trying to create two different tables one is based on methodology and another one is based on different base i'll remove these these sets and that will probably help you done so the, this here is uh, here the role of sets come say for example you wanted to generate four or five different tables and type of data data collection method this is the part of methodology correct and you wanted to uh, put them in one group or a different table simply select them and drag and drop to sorry i did a mistake i believe yes i did a mistake so should it be should it have been that it comes all in uh, i mean this should have been a sub code to methodology by any chance mm, pardon your question please Uh, I was just wondering whether this, uh, uh, what we are choosing, uh, should it be a type of data and uh, this thing? Should it be part of methodology? It's it should have been methodology is one code and these are all our sub codes. Yes, that could be done. That could be done. Right. So, say for example, you wanted to keep these codes together. Simply select these thing and put them on set. Once you put them in set, they'll ask you what is that methodology. Mm -hmm. correct then type of market number of country focus country these are the part of context correct correct set context 
Now you can see, I'll deselect everything. Right? Now you can see once you click on context, only out of these codes, my system is getting a bit slow. Only these codes have been selected. Once you deselect context, activate only methodology section, only the codes from methodology section will be activated and probably if you are coding to methodology section or if you are coding to any other section, that will be an easier part for you, right? So this is how you can group different codes in one theme, one way, like somebody has just was saying like one is the code and another was a sub code, probably independent variable and everything. Let me create a new code, which is called as methodology. And all of them could be put it under methodology section like this way. Okay, they are not selected. Simply drag and drop and now you can see all the codes are under methodology. So the table will be generated like uh, in this hierarchy itself. Correct? Thank you. Are we able to achieve today's objective? Then I'll come to the gap analysis and all other ways for doing that. Or if you are having any other question which is related to literature review or uh, any other perspective of this, not with the advanced perspective of the software. So if you are having any other question with this particular front. It's a question about the pricing, question. pricing of software. Pardon, pardon please? The software, so what is the price of this software? My SQDA? Can we get it for like can we oh, we can get it for quarterly three four months so is max qd available for like three months four months max qd is available for one month itself one month for trial and then after this workshop you'll get a license code for another month so even if you have uh, your trial period is expired you will be able to use max qd for another month this is one way of looking at it and i believe one project one month's time is sufficient to complete one project that's one way uh, when we talk about pricing uh, for about a year, this comes under, for a year, this comes about uh, 12,000 or something. After this workshop, we will be also be able to offer you uh, some codes. Uh, we'll give you some coupon codes, some coupons, and you'll be able to avail about 20% discounts on that. So if it is costing somewhere about uh, 12,000 and you are able to explore, you are able to get a uh, discount of about 20%, roughly, 2400 uh, 2, discount. So less than 10,000 will be the cost for a year. And so otherwise for lifetime? The... Perpetual license is uh, less costlier in comparison to other softwares, but yes, will be costlier somewhere about 30,000 or something. Okay, thank you so much, thank you. So are we able to generate the code sheet or these tables or these tables of literature review? or any problem or any challenge? So, bad mein yoga bhi to. <laughs> I'll, I'll share these Excel sheets for you. Uh, these Excel sheet, uh, this, uh, my Excel sheet is having uh, good details for your reference. You can very easily understand that. So say, for example, when I ask about nature of article on the column at below, this uh, ask you, this suggest, when I, what, what do I mean by nature of article? It is empirical, conceptual, methodological, or viewpoint. When I talk about research objective, as mentioned by a scholar, problem uh, crystallization, this is what, what do I mean by problem crystallization, topical scope, statistical study, case study or other method, other methodology, time dimension, cross-sectional or longitudinal. This is a good Excel sheet. And many of uh, research scholars are able to publish some good, good amount of uh, papers, some good amount of uh, research articles based on SLR methodology or other ways of doing this. I'll share this Excel sheet with you. 
any further question otherwise i'll be moving to the paper which talks about gap analysis or different types of gaps say yes or no to the chat box or <laughs> what is your take you can share your opinion in that front in the in that way yes sir yes sir please go ahead so many of you or many of the uh, very senior researchers or very se uh, very senior scholars talks about we should talk about gap analysis we should talk about gap analysis gap analysis gap analysis and gap analysis correct while i was doing this i find a very interesting paper and this is not a paper actually this is a workbook how to identify gap and what is a different name in general we are able to identify only gaps this paper highlights seven research gaps this paper highlights seven research gaps and you will be surprised to know there are few papers initially which, which which are talking about five types of gap or maybe six types of gap this paper or maybe um, different other types of gap but probably this paper is the first paper which is able to identify seven type of different gap which we need to report to a research paper so it is not gap only and probably uh, the reviewer will find you more wise in that front this is not a gap this is a population gap or that is this is an evidence gap this is a knowledge gap so when you say this study is not conducted in my country though it is not workable in present scenario but this is a knowledge gap most of the developed countries were able to explore this phenomena but emerging economies developing economies are still fighting are still struggling to understand what is this knowledge and how this knowledge could have been implemented to the emerging economies to the developing economies instead of saying this you are simply saying the same thing but in the different words and that is under knowledge gap right so could you share us full screen please <laughs> is it not available on full screen we, we can see only half of it just a minute i'll just share it again At the bottom two circles were not visible. Probably I'll have yeah. to look at. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, now. I'll have to squeeze it up. Otherwise, top two circle will disappear. <laughs> okay. Maybe you can say once you talks about these. Once you have talked about this knowledge gap, you can say. and there are many research papers who have explored up to exploratory analysis cfa structural equation modeling but nobody has talked about ahp nobody has talked about fuzzy ahp nobody has talked about these many methodologies to solve this problem methodological gap <coughs> sorry empirical gap is the same as methodological gap but probably finding a deviation probably one empirical gap takes a uh, space you must have conducted at least one meta analysis a study and then probably you will be able to understand what is empirical gap but yes theoretical gap people are able to connect x plus y people are able to connect y plus z but there is no study which talks about there is a connection between x and y theoretical gap population gap people have conducted this on the top of the pyramid population not at the bottom of the pyramid population so this study has been conducted with a different setting again the same thing developed countries not with the emerging economies right and very interesting part you love this part of this paper and i'm 100% sure you love this part so once it talks about different types of gaps this 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 paper has defined different types of gap <coughs> I'm sorry just this also gives you a definition and framework and this also gives you a framework how to write an evidence gap 
So a strategy sample item. So once you're writing evidence gap, the researcher identified apparent evidence gap in the prior research concerning to very concerning to your area or concerning to your theme. Previous research has addressed several aspects of this, one to this, second to this, third to this. However, the previous research has not addressed several contradictions into the findings concerning to the prior research. The researcher has identified there is an evidence gap in the prior studies that has been contradicting in this finding. And then citations of what was the prior research, what is the new research, and there is no relation with the prior research in this. But once you talk about knowledge gap, the researcher identified an apparent knowledge gap in the prior research concerning, in addition to the prior research, did not address the subject of these research. And that is why we as a researcher are trying to make, are trying to make this effort to complete, to fill this gap. Knowledge economy, knowledge, uh, practical knowledge gap. My, my, many of the researchers have completed this, uh, these type of research papers, but probably digital strategies or maybe uh, websites of the, these strategies could not have been adopted by many websites. So we are trying to look at how these new findings or how these new theory talks about these old websites or how these uh, new websites talks about these old theories, practical knowledge gaps could have been addressed by that. Way. So this, I, I love this paper pretty much. I generally, after a month or maybe two months, I revise this paper multiple times, right? Just to identify what type of gaps one could handle. There are multiple examples even. So I find this paper is useful to all the young research scholars. Actually, this is not a paper. This is a workbook. <laughs> Doctoral student workshop, finding research gaps, research methods and strategies. Dr. Anthony Miles. Right. So this is another way of handling all your challenges, which talks about different gaps, which is pretty much addressable in present scenario. Correct. So earlier, just before to this session, we were talking about gaps. And just after to this session, you will not be talking about only gaps. You'll be talking about there are seven types of gaps and which type of gap your paper is going to fill. Or maybe I have seen one of the paper, how that author has mentioned, that author has mentioned out of this matrix of these gaps, he has created a table. This paper will try to achieve on a Likert scale, knowledge gap, on third level, practical gap on first level because we are not we are not talking we, we will not talk to uh, industrial practitioners. Methodology gap we are using advanced methodology, so fourth level will be crossed. Empirical gap we have not conducted any study which is of meta analysis nature. Empirical analysis empirical gap has not been uh, will not be filled. Theoretical gap will be filled up to level three and population gap or evidences gap something is on two something is at three. So, and this was very impressive to the reviewer because he is not talking about gaps. He is talking about even variety of gaps. This is another way of impressing your reviewer. Once you submit your PhD thesis or once you submit your research paper or whatever you are trying to submit, you will be able to do that. But sir, that's, that becomes more of an individual opinion. No, even if we are using Likert scale, it is only the author who is saying it is scoring one or three. Or you are taking whole it paper, an expert. The whole paper is of your individual opinion, isn't it? Okay. So, I mean, is that acceptable? If you, if you talks about socialization, if you talks about okay. any other concept, it is whole your opinion, how you wanted to find, identify the evidences. Okay. So we don't need to involve two, three experts in uh, scaling of Likert scale and all no, that? Nothing, no. nothing. The whole paper is of your opinion. The paper is okay. my child and this will go as and where my opinion goes. Very useful paper, sir. Very useful. Correct. Thank you. Uh, there is one question. Uh, in the SLR, I, uh, I suppose uh, there is a requirement that there should be more than uh, one coder. So, uh, as far as the validity, uh, this one. So, in that case... Uh, pardon, pardon, please, pardon, validity and... For, 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 for validity, there should be more than uh, one coder uh, for uh, SLR. At least, at least three coders should be there. Yeah. So at least three, then in that case, if there is a single researcher, that is, for example, you are doing it on an individual basis, uh, how do we solve this problem? I don't think there is a solution of this problem. 
instead of you can ask somebody to collaborate with you but then uh, will it be i mean how do we put it in the paper or how do we uh, uh, substantiate in the in the review meeting and all i'm not getting your question probably uh, if there is only one author who is working on a paper and there are maybe less than 50 number of research paper for slr i yeah. don't think there is a need of three coder yeah so right? how and then there is no validity on this one coder was sufficient and this uh, this one was coding and recoding i done the i have done the coding and recheck my own coding but the paper number of paper should be less than 50 and if you are saying you have extracted the data in march and you are having uh, maybe 500 research papers and you are submitting a paper in may and you are saying there is only one coder probably okay yeah, there is a challenge okay. right Thank so you. yes every everything should be justified one person could do a coding of uh, 50 papers in a month that's okay. okay but one coder could not do the coding of 500 papers even in 3 months no, so that is why the, and the, this uh, coding reliability coding validity is a theoretical aspect there is no empirical testing on that this is simply a report and uh, yeah, the bias, i believe uh, many of the coders, time i sorry coders bias coders, coders bias will be uh, reduced if we have uh, more than one coder no so that is that yes. may be one of the reason for having uh, three or more coders for maybe SNR. instead of using that coder bias you can uh, ask to your supervisor or you can ask to some other expert for that purpose okay it can also help you in reducing your bias okay but if it is not a social sciences research i don't believe uh, there is a bias of coder yes in terms of marketing in terms of businesses i don't find there is a biasness but yes if it is a social uh, sciences um, yeah societal tendency yeah. then there are high chances of uh, biasness yeah thank you gender discrimination yeah, income discrimination regional or racial discrimination if that kind of research is there then yes if there are three coder with the different genders or maybe different race uh, religions or maybe different regions that will help you thank you Mm. Uh, v A R G asking yes sir for gap uh, okay, gap analysis for you. How do you identify evidence gap, Mr. Kanan? Yeah, hello. Sorry, yes ma'am. Yeah, just one point I wanted to ask. I'm doing a bibliometric analysis on entrepreneurial intention mm -hmm. through Bibliashiny and Vosphere. Through Vosphere, if we go for keyword co-occurrences. and uh, therein we find some remote bubbles or very small in size we identify them as the dry areas or the least explored areas right mm -hmm. so can we use this one the gap analysis which you have done here there also for example in if your I case uh, if you are talking about this is not the analysis which is suitable for your case uh, you can perform a star framework i believe as per my opinion a star framework is more suitable analysis for your case fine okay what is that can you please tell mm just okay, check on sorry. google there is a star yeah, framework yeah. model I just check on google and i believe you will find it fine i will do thank you okay for next sunday we have decided that instead of 2 hours we'll be doing it for 3 hours uh, we'll be starting a class from 5 to 8 and uh, instead of 2 hours uh, session we'll be having 1.3 hour session each and we'll be having a 10 or maybe 15 minutes break in that front and we'll be able to complete whatever we have missed during the session i believe the most important missing session is uh, about uh, interview session and then mix method one and then yes network analysis is also missing and we'll be able to complete with this this is a kind of uh, extra class okay one more point if yes. possible in future not uh, in this workshop if not possible i i uh, previously also inquired about uh, you just uh, gave an example of uh, uh, videos to be used uh, in a paper Uh, in which uh, that yoga guru i don't remember yeah ram swam mm -hmm. ramdev ramdev i just wanted to work on some mission mm -hmm. and uh, 
and this part I'll, I'll search that paper. paper. I'll definitely search that paper and we'll um, uh, send that paper to the group. Okay, in some other workshop, if it is possible for you to demonstrate how practically it was visible, it could be beneficial to us. Okay, sir. I'll record a video on that and then we'll forward that video to your WhatsApp group. Sure, thank you so much. <laughs> Correct. So this extra class will be on Saturday or Sunday? Sunday, Sunday. Sunday. And the next class is on Saturday or on Friday? Next class is on Saturday uh, from Professor Sahin. This is on ethnography. Okay. okay. And then next to next class is on Sunday, which I'll be taking for three hours. Shalini, ma'am, I announced uh, without taking yes, permission. Yes, I'm here only, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. <laughs> I'm here only. I, I thought we had a discussion so that I can announce yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. That's perfectly fine, sir. No problems. So I think any, are... any further question uh, with the today's session? No, sir. Very well explained. Uh, just can you share that gap paper, sir? That's very useful. I'll, I'll share everything. Whatever I have demonstrated to you for discussion, I'll share that everything. Don't worry. Uh, one thing, uh, which, uh, which framework is uh, more suitable for evidence gap and uh, evidence gap uh, analysis? Uh, star framework is suitable. The spider framework is also suitable in that situation. Okay. Or maybe like if it is if you find practical analysis and all these way probably uh, what is that called? Uh, I'm forgetting this name. Framework. Mm, practical based probably TMCC or maybe best is ADO, the shorter framework but offers a lots of insights. ADO, thank you. Thank you everyone. Right, sir. Thank you so much. And two days it was a wonderful session, sir. Absolutely. Yeah, I mean, the max QD, we could actually see how basically we can work with the qualitative software and that too with so much of ease in doing SLR. So that's yes, really wonderful. Max QD uh, helps you in extracting these tables very easier. Other softwares are not able to help this extraction and everything. And that Excel is very tedious. <coughs> yes, sorry. Sir, do you have some papers where Max QDA has been used like um, practically? Pe thoda, thoda I do have multiple papers, but uh, I will not forward you those papers because I am having all the papers in my area. If you want to do it, search some papers which are related to your area and all of these sir, are related to Google. Sir, do thin, do thin de do, sir. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'll, I'll send a few. Yeah, I'll send a few, but most of them are related to marketing domain or maybe to no the management. Wale sab kuch padh lete. Okay, then it's Next okay. Send, I'll send it, it very well. In fact, I have start, uh, decided to take a max QD only. Okay. The way you explain. <laughs> right. Thank you. Thank, thank you, you so much. Thank you. Thank, thank you, everyone. Thank you.